All right, the other video cut out and you didn't hear half of what I said, but that's okay. So what I said was, if you're going to go ahead and color furniture, what have you, make sure that you are thinking about wood grain and things of that nature so that you aren't just making like round circles or it's not wouldn't go the way regular wood would go like here I went this direction and I didn't go this direction on the edges again I was real controlled so that it all looks the same and I did the same even on the round one because if you look at a round table that's made out of wood they've cut it the the long pieces of wood they've cut them around the edges round it's still wood going in a direction and so it's still got grain and then um, so the flooring here is one of the things that I really wanted to talk about and you missed it because I needed to delete some videos so I what I said was don't just go like this and go oh there's my floor because now I've got it done really fast and that's good enough really you're not going to get a high price for good enough you're going to get a higher price and people will recommend you if it's real they feel like they're getting real quality so again you're going to need to be careful about how you're coloring and I don't know if this color is coming through very well I don't think it is and this is still attached to the whatever so what I was talking about was layer if you're layering, then you have a chance to add some more color and more depth and more texture. So, wow, that's really sharp right there. So now I'm going to go a different direction, and I'm going to add some more color to this flooring. Um, if it's wood, then, you know, it's okay if you start to see lines and grain lines, because if you look at a wood floor you know it's got different little variations of the wood and I said you make sure when you come to these edges of doorways and such that you've got a nice even line going across and I also said you don't necessarily have to um, like you don't have to do it in all browns. I'm going to take this gray that I have over here and then I'm going to go a third direction just to add a little bit of, well, that got dark, um, variation and add some depth to it. And this has got really sharp edges. So hmm. that's not working so much. A little bit duller. This one, a little bit better. It's not creating lines. The lines actually, to me, look like you know, wood grain. So just like keep building on your color. I did such a good job there when you weren't couldn't see it. Um, build on that color with different ones, and that way it'll give you texture. You could actually go out to a cement sidewalk or a brick and color and that'll give you some texture too like doing a leaf rubbing that type of thing um, now I want to finish coloring this so make sure that you're being very careful because you want to give your client the best presentation that you can and we have plenty of time and this is something like if you're watching TV at night you can do the coloring and then it doesn't feel like you're doing homework but it just feels like you're doing something that's fun so think about it in those terms and like here when I'm coloring this because it's all the same color it, this is the easiest way to go then I'm not worried about going over those lines right there just make sure that it's the same as this one here. Um, 
I can't even remember what I said these were wood pieces so uh, maybe there are different kind of wood than this but again I'm still going to make it go in a specific direction because our wood does go in that direction I could add depth to this wood too um, by adding another color to it so again I get it these edges it's like well how can I do that without doing going the other direction you just have to be controlled over it and take your time so anything worth doing is worth doing well, which is a saying. Um, you could take some black and like, so this isn't going to look black, but it's going to make it look darker and it just adds a little bit more depth to it. So layering colors, really good way to um, make your drawing a little bit more sophisticated. And just take your time and do your best and practice off to the side with your colors. You could practice layering over to the side until you feel comfortable. And then, I mean, look, I have this many colors in my hand. That way they're readily available. I don't know. That is, is that a weird thing? I don't think it's a weird thing. I think, and yeah, look, I did just go like that, but I there were little white spots, so... It's not like I'm making a whole nother line right there. I am just filling in some of those white spots. So my car my carpeting is darker here. That's where you come in. Maybe I should make traffic patterns. I don't know. Um so have fun coloring. Be consistent. Don't worry about, oh, this is too dark. I'd rather have things nice and dark than pastel -y, and I can hardly see them when you're presenting them to us and um, on your presentation. So I, I think I said I kind of went in a circle. Well, it's almost a circular motion at the edge. I think I want this darker. Um, I like darker colors and I don't know, rich. This is a little bit more rich, so I may darken all of that up. Uh, so on this cushion, I'm going to go the same direction. And because I've already colored over here, I, I don't have to be as careful, but you don't want to make it so that you can see that you've colored outside the lines a little bit. So then when I go to this cushion, I'm going to make it go this way because that's the way the fabric is going to go. So, so again, you've got to think about which direction is my fabric really going. Um, it's not going to go at a diagonal because that's just cheap, cheap fabric. Um, it will pull and look awful on a piece of furniture. So really it's going to either go vertical or horizontal while you're coloring. So make it look like that on your drawings too. And have fun and be creative. <laughs>